name is Snigdha Sothi. I am 16 years old and I live in New Delhi. I love to read and write and The Power of Determination is one of my favorite short stories that I've written. It's about a girl, Maya Agarwal, who is an achiever and everything in life goes, is almost perfect. But something happens, an incident that changes her life entirely. And it, this story is about that. So here it goes. Hope you all like it. All the teachers rushed to room number 14. They had heard the scream of a girl and the sound of something shattering. What they saw horrified them all. The girl lay in pain on the floor. Her face covered with blood and glass pieces sticking out of her eyes, lips and forehead. Maya Agarwal, a regular 15-year-old, was a student of a reputed school in Delhi. She was popular among her classmates for her friendly and compassionate nature. Many were admirers of her beauty, both internal and external, but she never let that get on her head. Maya had a talent that had now become her passion, painting. She only held the brush and her hands would move and the paint would land with such perfection on the canvas that the paintings she made would look nothing less than real. This quality of hers landed her as the apple of her school's principal, her teacher's and her peers' eye. Seniors were proud of her and juniors looked up to her. There was nothing Maya wasn't happy with. Her life was nearly perfect. One fine day, Maya was in school and take, was taking out something from her bag in an empty classroom. As she unzipped her bag that was kept near the window, a cricket ball came swooshing through it, breaking the glass with all its pieces flying everywhere, in all directions. Unfortunately, Maya, being quite close to that window, fell victim to them. Many glass pieces went in her hair and a lot hit her face. Quite a few of them also injured her eyes. Thankfully, she was found in time, groaning in tremendous amount of pain by her teachers who immediately rushed her to the hospital. Months passed and Maya underwent multiple surgeries and treatments to recover her original face. Everything was restored except for her eyes, which she lost forever. Physically, Maya became almost all right again, but mentally, she was now a lifeless soul. Her usual cheerfulness was absent and her view to look at everything positively had gone away to some far off place. Every single day became living hell for her as she could no longer do most of the activities that she did earlier. Most sadly, she could no longer paint, which was her passion in life. She thought that her life was now a colorless canvas which could not regain color ever. Out of everyone around her, Maya's parents were the most worried. For how could any parent see their only child in such a state? They tried to bring her back to her old self by doing small, small tasks with her. For instance, after much persuasion, she agreed on going for morning walks with them every day. Soon enough, Maya began getting used to her new life, the newer way of doing things. A year had now passed since Maya's accident. She was now completely used to her way of living and carried out most of her activities without anyone's help. One ordinary morning, while walking in the nearby park, she heard the melodious tune of a violin. That melody soothed her ears, and after a long time, she felt rejuvenated and overjoyed. Positive vibes and emotion flowed through the veins of her body, and she felt the urge to grab a brush and express herself on a canvas. As soon as that thought struck her mind, though, Maya came back to the reality and was reminded that she was no longer Maya the artist, but was Maya the visionless and sorrowfully she continued to walk. Days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months and Maya kept on visiting the park for her morning walks as part of her routine. One day, after walking while trying to sit on a bench, she accidentally poked someone with her stick. Ouch! Oh my god, um, beg your pardon, I was just trying to sit. She immediately replied, No, no, it's okay, please sit. A conversation struck between the stranger and Maya and she found out that he was Vikrant a 17-year-old who loved music. I play the violin and come here to practice sometimes. The morning solitude brings me here to express myself. Oh, how lovely. I would love to hear you play it. You would. All right then, but let me warn you. I'm not much of a professional, he said hesitantly. That's all right. Besides, no one's here to judge you. Do play your instrument. As Vikrant began playing the violin, the tune produced a sense of deja vu in Maya as she heard it. She tried hard remembering the memory of that distinct sound that the violin produced and soon enough she did. You are the one, she exclaimed and interrupted Vikrant. It was you who played this exact tune two months back in the park that morning. 
I remember I was walking when I heard this melody. I was highly impressed and absolutely loved it. He thanked her for the compliments and began playing again. That was the day Maya found a new friend. Over time, Vikrant and Maya's friendship grew quickly and soon they became best friends. They shared laughs, cries and anecdotes and met every day in the park. Once, while talking about how he had written his entire thesis report, which was due the next day, without his partner, who went away to his grandparents' place all of a sudden, Maya jokingly said to Vikrant, Why with your hands, of course? He suddenly grew silent. Puzzled, Maya asked him about what was wrong and whether he was okay. Vikrant replied, Yes, um, I'm fine. I guess we have never really talked about this, have we? About what? Never mind. What was I saying about their thesis? Ah, yes. So it's um, Pikrant. What is it that we haven't talked about? After letting out a deep, long sigh, he explained his condition to her. He told her everything. Right from how he had been a gifted musician and how his entire life revolved around music. Then came along an incident which changed his life forever. In a brutal car accident when he was 12, he lost his hands and the ability to play his beloved instrument with them. While he remained broken for a while, he did not let the accident let him give up the one thing he loved doing the most in life. Nevertheless, he continued his passion for playing the violin and learned to play the instrument with his legs. Maya remained quiet for some time. She did not know how to react. Whatever Vikrant had narrated was so relatable to her, but at the same time, not so much. Vikrant broke the silence by saying, See, that's why I never told you about this. I thought that you too would abandon me because of my disability. Of course not, Vikrant. How could you even think of that? She was stunned how Vikrant continued his passion even after losing what he needed the most, his hands. After that day, Maya changed. Her newly found inspiration from Vikrant led her to take up painting again. Slowly, with a lot of practice, she came back to becoming the beloved of the art society of her school. Everyone around her was happy to see the old Maya come back. The day she won an oral at an inter-school event, after such a long period, she finally told Vikrant about it, how painting was her life, and that incident that had occurred that day in school, the difficult phase of her life, and how he was the catalyst which brought her back. When he asked her how she painted now, Maya replied, I just figured out another way to paint, like you did, to play the violin. I now imagine what I have to draw in my mind and let, just let the paint flow on canvas. Smiling, they both said in unison, anything is possible if you put all your faith and determination in it. Thank you.